Hi guys, my name is Navdeep Sand. I'm a software engineer at Cisco Systems. In this video, we'll learn about the fundamentals and working of PCE-initiated LSPs. Um, for the purpose of this session, I'm assuming that you guys are already familiar with the segment routing uh, and SRTE basics, um, because we will not talk about that stuff in this session. Um, but before jumping into the PC-initiated LSP details, uh, we'll briefly go over the PSAP uh, basics and see how it works and uh, uh, where it is useful. So PSAP uh, stands for Path Computation Element Protocol as defined in RFC 5440. Uh, it works in a client and server model. Um, so what PSAP does it, it enables us to have a centralized traffic engineering model. So we have one centralized server <clears throat> from that server uh, that server has the topological view of all the IGP domains, and you can have TE tunnels traversing multiple IGP domains. A little bit background on how it works. Um, from the information, the topology information from um, the IGP is passed to the BGP, and BGP link state database is built. That BGP LS database is used by the PCE, which is uh, the server, uh, to create a traffic engineering database, the TAD. So once that TAD is built, uh, the PCE, the server, would have all the topological uh, information from all the IGP domains, and it can help to create TE tunnels between multiple IGP domains. Uh, for a PSAP, for PSAP to work, we should have that background topology information to be passed along to the PCE, and TAD should be built up properly. And once we have that, uh, we have that set up. Um, any client within uh, within the network could have a PSAP session established with the PCE, with the server, and we can request <coughs> uh, an LSP. And if the PCE has that LSP in the database, it's able to provide the uh, to find the path. It will provide that in the ERO, uh, uh, as in the ERO in the PCE message, and the requirement would be met, and we would have our tunnel up. Um, that's that's the that's the background of PCE. So now let's talk about um, the PC initiated LSP. So what it is, it's a it's a step further than the the basic PSAP. Um, now in, instead of requesting the path from the client, uh, we can also control uh, this TE generation uh, creation of tunnels, delegation, undelegation, deletion, or update uh, from a web based application. So the web-based app would talk to the PC server through REST calls. Uh, it would use the REST interface. And using REST calls, we can, uh, we can create, delete, uh, we can control that TE interface. Um, so it's, uh, it's, uh, the, the PC-initiated LSP support is negotiated uh, during the PSAP session bring up. Um, a new flag, uh, the create flag C, it has been introduced um, uh, for this working. Um, <clears throat> so if the client and the server both have that capability, the C flag would be negotiated, and once we have that session up, we can initiate tunnels from uh, the web-based application um, using the REST calls to create um, tunnels traversing multiple IGP domains. Um, now these, uh, these tunnels are auto tunnels, and uh, uh, they are controlled by the global auto tunnel configuration on Cisco ISXC devices. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we are using one PC server, but uh, we, in production environments, you would have multiple PC servers, one primary and one se secondary. And uh, if, if in case of failure, your secondary word would come up and it would have the, all the LSP database in sync with the primary server. So once uh, we, we, um, once we send a REST call to create a tunnel, that call is passed to the PC server, and it's translated into a PC initiator request message going towards the client. Uh, that information is passed in the REST call that what client it wants to go to and what uh, are the parameters of the tunnel. Uh, once the client receives the PC initiated request, and uh, if everything, everything in the message is validated and if it meets all the requirements, it sends the report, it brings up the tunnel, and uh, we have our auto tunnel up without even going anywhere uh, within, the, within the network and not touching any node. In this demonstration, we'll be using a topology similar to this. Um, we would have two IGP domains. Uh, our head end uh, would be uh, R1. The router, it, it has an IP 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 
and uh, our tail end router is in IGP domain 2, uh, which has an IP 6.6.6, .6 and we will try to create um, an auto tunnel PC initiated from our head end to our tail end. Now, from both these IGP domains, I have BGP link state working at the back end, and that information is passed uh, to the PC server, and it's able to build up the TAD um, um, without any problem. So here we can see um, a sample REST um, call to create an LSP. If you look here, uh, <clears throat> the PC, so we define, so in, within the REST call, we define what PC server do we want to send it to, uh, what port it would use, 8080 in our case, and this is an LSP create call, so it would create an LSP uh, on what peer it would create, that would be the PCC, the client IP, what's the name of the LSP, uh, test 10 in our case, and what's the source of the tunnel, and what's the definition of the tunnel. Uh, this uh, LSP is to create a dynamic tunnels. You can also create, um, <clears throat> you can also provide the LSPs um, and the node, node, pre, um, the node sets um, with the call, but we will not cover that here. Um, if we move here, you could see all the other options that we have through the REST calls um, that we can use to, to drop the delegation, to reclaim the delegation for an LSP, or to delete an LSP. And the last one is for to delete all the LSPs created on that peer. And those are delegated uh, to, the, to the PCE uh, that's defined in the REST call. So now let's quickly um, move to a quick demo and see how this looks uh, on the real routers. So on my left side here, I have my head end router. Um, and if you, let's see the, <clears throat> the PSAP session, if it sets up. So I already have the configuration. So this output tells me that uh, my PSAP session with my server with IP 51.1.1 is up, it's in up state. And the output here shows me all the capabilities we have uh, with that server to go, so it's stateful, uh, it, it supports segment routing, and uh, the instantiation keyword here tells us that it, and this piece of session supports the PC-initiated LSP um, protocol. We can, we can check the same thing on the server here on our right side, uh, which is, by the way, an XTC server. It's an XR-based um, uh, Cisco router. But uh, it's a standardized protocol. You can use any uh, any any PC server for this uh, for this protocol. Uh, WAE and ODL are other two open source uh, PC servers that can be used. Now look at the PCE uh, session details from the client side. So here we see um, that the session is up on the server as well. <coughs> Uh, this is our client IP. The state is up, and these are the capabilities it, it, it support. Um, so the messages down here, the stats, uh, tell us about the, um, the health of the, the session, how many key lives are exchanged, how many requests and replies are done, how many errors are, have been exchanged. Just in case if there is a problem, you would see um, errors here, which, you know, uh, while very useful while you are troubleshooting open messages, how many open messages have been exchanged. So now our session is up. Let me try to send a REST call to this server and to create an LSP. So this is a sample REST call. This is uh, my PC server IP, and I'm creating an LSP. <clears throat> uh, this is the peer. As you could see that this is the client IP address. So th on this client and the name of the LSP, and the, from this source to this destination. So if I go back to the diagram that I shared, so we are going from our router 1.1.1.1 to 6.6.6.6, .6, which is in domain, uh, IGP domain two. If I try to check my IP route here, you could see that I have a route because I already have a tunnel. Let me just remove this tunnel and uh, show you guys. So, we
All right, guys, so I have removed that tunnel, and now you could see that we have no route from our head end router uh, to 6.6.6.6. .6 so now let's try to create a PC initiated tunnel um, from our head end uh, to that destination. So I you could see that uh, um, I just uh, released that, uh, just issued, issued that uh, REST call, and the HTTP code for that is 200. That means it went well. It's okay. The the status is okay, and it created an LSP named it test one on peer 1.1.1.1, which was a success. So let's go to our our um, our client our head end and sh see that how that tunnels tunnel looks like. So um, this tunnel, tunnel number 2000, why is it 2000? If, as I explained earlier, that the auto tunnel numbers are controlled by uh, the auto tunnel global configs on a, an NXE node. So as you could see here that I have my auto tunnel configuration and my, the minimum starts, uh, the block size is 2000 to 3000. So any tunnel, auto tunnel that comes up would be assigned, the first tunnel would come up, be assigned the number 2000, and so on after that. So we'll look here, we have our auto tunnel 2000 up. Now check, let's check the details for that tunnel. So <clears throat> tunnel 2000, it's going to destination 6.6.6.6. .6 .6 .6. uh, the LSV name is test1, that's what we requested, and it's in upstate. And these are the tunnel specific parameters here. If we go down here, we see the PSAP related information for the tunnel. We see that the, it's uh, delegated to peer 51.1.1. The delegation state is working, yes. And um, uh, it's created via PC initiated message. So that's what it differentiates, so that output differentiates it from um, uh, non PC related tunnel, initiated tunnels. Uh, you wouldn't see it there. So it's in. These are the reported path. This is what the path we received in the ERO, and uh, the tunnel is up. Now just let's check our LSP database on the server and see how it looks like on the server. So as you could see, that we have that LSP up in the LSP database uh, on server as well for client one dot one dot one. Uh, it shows us the source and the destination and the tunnel ID and the LSP ID for that. Um, it shows the reported path. And uh, if you look here, it also shows us the flags for that communication. So C flag is set to one, which means it was created through a PC initiated request. And the D flag is set to one, which is a delegate flag, which tells us that currently this tunnel is delegated to this uh, PC, PCE server. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> let's um, try to undelegate this tunnel and see how that would work. So I go back. Um, so we're just gonna issue this uh, arrest call, which says drop delegation for LSP test one. So once I issue this, we have a success. So let's see how it looks like on our client. As you could see, the delegation status has changed to no. This tunnel is not delegated with any PC server anymore. If we go back and check the LSP database on our server, you could see the D flag has been set to zero. So this LSP at the moment is in orphan state. The state timer is running in the background, which is 60 seconds. If this is not uh, delegated to any other PC server within 60 seconds, it would be deleted by the client. Now, before that happens, let's just reclaim this LSP. Reclaim, all right, we have a success. And if you see now that this is delegated back to peer this, and it was created and all that information. and. If we check back our LSP database on the server, you could see that the D flag is set back to one and it's delegated back to this server. So this is some of the stuff we can do with it. Um, if you want to delete this tunnel, what we can do is we can issue the, the REST call. We say LSP delete and we provided what uh, LSP name we want to delete and on what peer. 
before we do that, once we have our tunnel up, we can check that for the IP that was previously unreachable from domain one, now we can reach it over via tunnel 2000. And we can also check the sub stats for this IP. <coughs> See, that's installed in the Ceph as well, and all the communication, all the forwarding would work uh, over this tunnel. And now let's try to delete this. Um, executed this rest, we have success. That means our tunnel 2000 should be deleted gracefully. It's done, and if we check the uh, LSP database here, it's cleaned from there as well. So this is some of the stuff that we can do with PC-initiated protocol. Thanks for watching this video.